Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 13 in which we're going to go over budgeting and managing costs. So all organizations are going to operate on a budget and the budget is how much income an agency has relative to its expenditures, how much money goes out. Um, the budget is going to be based off of a fiscal year which is a 12 month accounting period used by the agency to determine how to spend the budget. This doesn't always mimic the actual calendar year from January to December where I work full time our budget or our fiscal year starts in like June or July. Um, so it doesn't always mimic the actual calendar. There are budget categories that I want you to know. Um, and these are issues that you're when you're developing that final project and you're figuring out, um, okay, well, how am I going to, how am I going to budget my agency? These are the things that you're going to want to hit up. So first let's talk about variable costs and these are costs that are going to change over time depending on the type of service provided. So an example of that would be personnel. Do you have more or do you have less? That's going to vary the amount of money that you need in the budget based on paying for salaries, paying for benefits, paying for retirements and so forth. Fixed costs are constant. Okay, these are things that are always going to be present, like uh, the building that you work at. Um, is it rented? Is it is it a mortgage either or? You know, rent is always going to be there. Mortgage is always going to be there. Utilities are always going to be there, etc. I want to talk about some budgeting systems, and these are the ones that you're really going to want to pay attention to for your final project and say, okay, which one would I use and why? So first we're going to talk about line item budgeting, and this is where there's going to be specific categories. Okay, so the line items are going to be things like personnel, maintenance, training, all of those things cost money and they each get their own category. So those line, those specific categories are going to be identified and when you're determining the budget, you're going to determine a certain amount of dollars for each one at the beginning of the year. So we have a budget of however much money, how many, you know, what size chunk is going to go to training, what size is going to go to maintenance, etc. There's performance budgeting, and these are areas that are higher performing, um, tend to receive greater, you know, you tend to want to give them greater amounts of the budget to sort of make sense, right? Um, this is the part of the organization that's flourishing. It's achieving the goals and the missions. Um, it's representing us well to the public. Let's give them more funding to continue doing the good work. There's program budgeting, which is funding that is allocated for each specific program, that each program gets a certain amount of funding. There's zero-based budgeting. So this is that all expenditures must be justified on an annual basis. So that typically what, what happens in an, an organization's budget is every year, you know, here was last year's budget, and you're gonna get at least what you had last year, maybe some more, right? Um, based off of you know a, a myriad of factors. Zero-based budgeting says no, you don't get what you had last year, you get zero to start with, and you justify every single thing in the budget and tell me why you need it and why it should be paid for okay and without that justification then you don't get the funding and you don't automatically just get you know last year's budget renewed um, this is a much more fiscally conservative approach to budget management know that budget is always an issue um within any organization is it's always an issue and there's never enough budget right i mean isn't that <laughs> no matter what we hear we whenever something new is proposed it's you know, that would be a great idea and that would be really helpful, but we don't have the budget for it, right? Um, and remember that there's, you know, within one organization, there are different entities that are constantly buying for the biggest piece of the pie that they can get so that they can do their jobs more efficiently. So budget is always a stressor. Um, the biggest part of budget costs are going to be personnel, right? We talked about paying salaries, taxes, retirement, benefits. That is astronomical amounts of your budget every year that's going to be the meat of your of your budget um, <clears throat> there's also something called contingency funds and this is going to be money that's allocated for emergencies so things like wrecked cruisers right um, you gotta you gotta repair them it costs money some years you might have 10 other years you might have 15 so the costs are going to vary right um, massive overtime due to unforeseen circumstances uh, if there's a crime surge right um, or or any number of issues, well, we're gonna need we're gonna need officers working overtime a lot more this year than we did last year. We're gonna need more funds for personnel and paying salaries, right? So contingency funds are there for the unexpected because we can always expect the unexpected. It's difficult to budget contingency funds because you don't know what's going to come up um, and you don't know what emergencies will crop up, but it's always good to have a healthy contingency fund. Okay. Um, there's something called variance analysis that is comparing the annual cost of a given year 
against what was budgeted and then determining the difference. So if you're over the budget, you need to make corrections and see where you can cut costs, right? There's also something called cut back, cut back budgeting, also called budget reduction, where you're going to provide the same or more the same or more services but with less funding. How do you do that? Well, there's ways of creative budgeting. So there's resource sharing from agency to agency. So instead of one agency taking on all the costs of a certain resource, maybe you you know work in tandem with another agency and you both share the, the burden of those costs. So it's not getting hit by you know one budget isn't taking it all on. Um, charging for services, you know, providing a surcharge fee. Uh, we do that with um, our sheriff's deputies that I train at my other job. That for every arrest they make, there's a surcharge fee that literally goes to fund their training, right? So um, they make an arrest, the surcharge fee, I don't even know what it is now. I think it's, I don't know, like 20 bucks or something, or 15 or 20 bucks. And that 15 or 20 bucks of all the costs that that person incurs during the arrest, it goes straight into a fund that funds their training. That's a way of cutting back on budgetary costs by bringing in that revenue. Um, Asset forfeiture. Now this gets a little dicey, okay, and this is a very controversial thing, um, but confiscation, asset forfeiture is confiscation of assets um, that are the proceeds of crime. You see this a lot with narcotics and narcotics trafficking, um, especially, you know, your, your big traffickers where they have the ridiculous number of houses and cars and planes and exotic animals like lions and tigers and stuff <laughs> because they have so much money from their ill-gotten gains um, that they have all of this excessive stuff if and when they're brought down, that those assets are seized. You forfeit those, those assets. Uh, the government, law enforcement will come in and take it and auction it off. Um, and that money will go to you know, provide for the law enforcement agency. This is a slippery slope, right? Certainly we don't want huge narcotics traffickers living this massive, amazing life without consequence because it reinforces other people to do it. Um, it's also, you know, if you know that all of your ill-gotten gains are likely to be seized and auctioned off, maybe it's a deterrent for people from doing that. Um, but it also provides massive incentive for law enforcement to seize. And what we wanna make sure is that law enforcement doesn't seize willy-nilly because it becomes a cash cow. Uh, this state of Louisiana, Louisiana, in particular, the New Orleans uh, Police Department got in trouble so at this point several decades back. I'm showing my age here. I was going to say a few years ago, but it's 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 been a lot longer than that. Um, in the 90s for um, abusing asset forfeiture, right, um, as a way of just bringing in tons and tons of funds and, and providing all sorts of perks and benefits to the law enforcement agency. So it is a way of creative funding, but it also has to be, um, it, there has to be good oversight that oversees it. Um, finally, um, other ways of creative funding are going to be grants from federal agencies um, and donations and fundraising.